there is an extinction event known as the Quaternary Extinction Event, the name originally coming from a fourth period in geological time. However, the extinction event occurred in different parts of the world at different times, and also to a different extent in each region. These extinctions started about 130,000 years ago in Africa. But in Africa, there were relatively few extinctions. However, the extinctions increased in number on other continents and islands, and do seem to be linked to the arrival of humans in those locations. So were humans either directly or indirectly responsible for these extinctions? Well, unusually, these extinctions were limited to a rather select group of animals, specifically that of large creatures, basically anything around the size of a human or larger. Which is why the extinction event is normally referred to as the extinction of the megafauna, or the large animals. A key animal that was lost from many areas of the planet was the mammoth. But there were bears, hippos, beavers, apes, rhinos, flightless birds, and many others that all went extinct. And these animals were all about twice the size of their surviving relatives that you might see around today. So what might have happened to make these animals go extinct? Well, one early theory was that there was a shift in the climate that caused these animals to die off. However, the temperature fluctuations at the time weren't that extreme, and isolated communities on large islands like Madagascar survived much later than did animals on mainland Africa or even in Europe. The changes in the climate can be fairly safely ruled out as causing the extinction. The other theory suggests that since the decline in megafauna closely matches the arrival of humans, humans may have played a role in their extinction. Now humans first evolved in Africa and the relatively slow growth in human activity may have given the animals on the continent more time to adapt to whatever the humans were doing, so fewer of the megafauna in Africa went extinct. One theory relating to human involvement in extinction event is known as overkill. In basic terms, these large creatures that adapted to their environment to recognise what few predators were large enough and strong enough to take down one of these mega creatures, and didn't really see that the humans represented that much of a threat. This enabled the humans to get close enough to the animals during the human hunting activity and kill more of the large animals that were being born. The theory proposes that this rate of hunting loss happened so quickly that all the animals could adapt to the threat of these new hunters and the large animal species became extinct as a result. Now these super large animals do require more food to survive, so the number of these creatures that are wandering around are fewer than their smaller cousins. However, for most of these animals there are still far too many of them for a relatively small number of scattered humans to be responsible for wiping them all out just by hunting. It didn't say that humans didn't wipe out any animals by hunting. For instance, in New Zealand, the moa, a three metre tall flightless bird, was wiped out by human hunting. But the confined island conditions and a relatively large number of humans are not present in other extinction events. So while hunting may have put some pressure on the megafauna, hunting is an unlikely to be the sole cause of their mass extinction. Hunting hypothesis also doesn't explain why many of the animals were able to survive by shrinking in size through the generations. Surely as the larger animals became extinct, the growing number of humans would then turn to the smaller versions of the animals for food. Instead of hunting these large animals to extinctions, indications are that humans had an impact on the availability of the food that these animals relied upon. As the animal food became less and less, it became possible to support such huge animals, so through generations the animals shrink in size or go extinct. It's a nice theory, but how could a relatively few humans thousands of years ago have a large enough impact on the ecosystem to make this happen? key probably here lies in the availability of vegetation as large animals either ate or relied upon their prey to be eaten. Any dramatic change in the type or the amount of vegetation would mean that these large creatures wouldn't be able to find enough food to sustain themselves. Our problem here is that there weren't enough humans to hunt large animals to extinction. How were there enough of them to change the vegetation in a large area? This could come down to three different activities. First of which is mammoth hunting. 
And while the number of humans in the area wouldn't be large enough to kill all of the mammoths, they would be enough to reduce the number of mammoths in a particular area or move the mammoths out of the area to somewhere where the fewer humans were hunting and the conditions were safer for the mammoths. And mammoths may have had an effect on their ecosystem similar to that of modern day elephants. Now both mammoths and elephants like to graze on short bushes and grasses rather than woodlands. The elephants, and presumably the mammoths, will actually manage the land by destroying some trees before they can get large enough and dense enough to start forming woodlands. By killing some mammoths or driving them out of a particular area, it might allow the woodlands and forests to grow in areas where they weren't present before. Some of the megafauna would be unable to find enough food in these new woodlands, so again, would move away from them. However, other megafauna with different feeding habits would still be able to thrive in the woodlands. But once these new woodlands were created, the humans themselves would also be likely to migrate to more open areas where their hunter-gatherer existence was more suited to their abilities. As these humans moved away, they might continue to create new areas of woodland as they moved on. Now, the humans that inhabited coastal areas had another food option available to them other than just hunting. That was fishing, especially catching fish like salmon, which swim upriver to spawn. Now, the rivers where these fish were present, the seasonal bounty provided by the spawning of the salmon produced a lot of food for humans and other hunters like bears. However, this is a side effect of the salmon spawning, and all that dead and decaying bodies of salmon will fertilise the ground around rivers, enabling larger plants like trees to grow around the banks of those rivers that have salmon in them. But since salmon only return to the rivers where they hatch, these wooded areas would be relatively isolated from each other. That is, they were isolated until the arrival of the humans, their large brains capable of reasoning, planning and problem solving. These humans figured out if one river filled with salmon was good, all the rivers filled with salmon would be better. So, during the spawning season, these people carried salmon eggs from a river overflowing with salmon to one where there was no salmon present, eventually meaning that all the local rivers had salmon in them. And also, over time, the banks of these rivers had enough nutrients in the ground to link up the scattered areas of woodland into a larger forest. These larger areas of forest again had a significant impact on the distribution of the megafauna. Eventually, however, the extent of these new woodlands created by the activity of humans might become too great for local hunters to be able to find enough food to thrive. So some groups took to using fire to clear the woodland areas and create again more open terrain. By using fire they could clear vast tracts of land that even modern chainsaws would be difficult to tackle. This relatively rapid change between woodland and cleared areas made it much harder for megafauna to survive, especially with the hunting habits of the humans added to the mix. So in many areas, the megafauna either shrunk in size or went extinct under pressure from the humans. Other than Africa, where the megafauna had time to adapt to the habits of the new humans, there were some isolated areas where the megafauna survived and prospered until relatively recent times and avoided the extinction event. These were creatures like the bison in America and the mammoths living in the northern tundra. Now, due to local conditions that were present in these areas, where the creatures lived, it was extremely difficult for the forest to gain a significant foothold. So despite there being humans present, these megafauna weren't hunted to extinction, and human activity couldn't change the landscape enough for them to be unable to find food to survive. So it appears that human activity in changing the local ecosystem combined with hunting may have been the driving force between the extinction of the megafauna.